Hey everyone, this is Chris back with the Beamer Barn and today we're gonna to be working on my E46 325XI wagon and specifically we're gonna be doing a full cooling system overhaul. Now the cooling system on the BMW six cylinder engines is probably one of the only points in the system that is prone to failure and it could cause bigger issues like head gasket failures, warped engines, and stuff like that. So it's really important that you service the cooling system on your car before it fails and today we're gonna to be doing almost every Every single component on the cooling system on my car. Now the reason why is because I noticed that the radiator was leaking not when the car was sitting but when the car was running and the pressure would build in the cooling system that's when one of the pinhole leaks would open up on the radiator and start leaking out that steam and that fluid and that is just a problem waiting to happen. So we're going to be replacing a ton of parts on the cooling system today. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Go ahead and drop a like for me down below if you do and subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't yet. So let's get right into it. So to start our cooling system overhaul, we're gonna have to get some items out of the way first, like the air box. And also I've already removed the fan and the fan shroud assembly. And that's gonna give us a lot better access to the thermostat like you can see here. Now remember to get this lower hose off of the expansion tank. And then on the bottom side here, I'm pulling off the automatic transmission cooler. So this is held in by one of these plastic clips. You have to pull up on the clip and then you can pull the transmission cooler out. Same thing with the expansion tank, you're gonna pull outwards on it. And then using a bit of force, you're gonna pull up on the expansion tank to get it removed. Now mine is clearly old. I didn't expect to see this, but seeing it, I don't want to put this expansion tank back in. So we ended up up ordering a new one and same thing with this automatic transmission thermostat for the radiator it just completely fell apart when we pulled the expansion tank out so we're gonna have to order one of those and get it on the way in order to replace it the thermostat we have to get these four bolts off one of them is a 13 millimeter and the rest are 10 millimeters now the 13 millimeter bolt is held to this engine bracket right here so this is to hold the engine up when you're servicing the oil pan and we're gonna remove the 11 millimeter nut that's on top you don't have to remove this bracket but just having it loose is gonna let us get the thermostat out of the motor
And all this yellow stuff that you're seeing on the radiator, by the way, that's dried up coolant that's been leaking through the cracks. It's actually the wrong flavor too. It should be cool blue flavor. This looks like lemon. So unfortunately I broke more things than I thought I was going to on the cooling system. So we kind of had to do a pause on that and do some other things and wait while we ordered some more parts from FCP Euro. But those parts are in now. I've got an intake boot because mine tore a little bit when I was messing around with it. This is cool. I got that BMW logo for the key. So we're going to be installing that here in a second. Can't wait to see how that looks. Also have an expansion tank cap here. Mine was broken and one of the seals was missing from it. Have a power steering reservoir line here because mine, when I moved it, it actually started cracking and then some power steering fluid started seeping through it. So we're gonna have to replace that for sure. I also have an automatic transmission uh, radiator cap here. So unfortunately I broke mine installing it. So I had to order another one, uh, kind of a stupid mistake, but you really want to be careful turning these to install and remove them because they have those little locking tabs and it's not even a quarter of a turn. It's more like a fifth or one sixth of a turn in order to get these into the locked position. So that was my mistake. And then right here, we've got a brand new expansion tank because mine was uh, kind of cracking, falling apart and uh, we'll be replacing it now. Oh, and last thing, we got one of these uh, automatic transmission thermostats as well because mine just completely fell apart and broke when we pull it out. So let's go ahead and get back to putting these on the car.
And as I'm putting this in, I'm also realizing that I forgot to take out the coolant temp switch out of the old one and I already threw it away. So that is my failure again. But luckily you don't need to have it installed. It's not gonna leak or anything. I'm just gonna throw a fault code for it. So let's install this now. So we've got almost everything reinstalled. I'm gonna go ahead and put the engine covers back on as well and the cabin filter housing with our new cabin filter. And of course, we're gonna do a quick cleaning of these covers first. So I just wanna show them to you dirty. And now we're gonna clean them and finish this job up. So as you saw, we've got some coolant in the system now and we got some ATF fluid. Uh, I'm low on both and I need to go grab more ATF fluid. But we're gonna go ahead and start the car now, open the garage up, and that's gonna let us vent out the last of the air bubbles in the cooling system. So we'll just keep an eye on this uh, level indicator and it should drop down. But I've got some distilled water to fill up the system and a little bit of coolant left actually. So we're gonna get that topped off, get the car running. Everything went in great, looks awesome here in the engine bay. Um, we haven't changed the brake fluid yet, but because we're going to be dropping the rear subframe later and the front subframe as well, I'm not going to do that yet. But this car now has the replace center support bearing, the coolant system overhaul, valve cover gasket replaced, and the oil filter stand replaced with the new spark plug cam filter. So it's in a ton better driving condition now. I can't wait to take it out. So let's go ahead and start her up. car sounds much louder because I don't have any uh, hardware holding the front of the exhaust system to the header so also there's an exhaust leak and it really smells now but it kind of sounds nice. Now what I'm doing is I've filled up the cooling system and I'm just bleeding from the bleeder screw here. This is the topmost point in the cooling system. So if there's any air, it should escape through here. Once we've got water flowing through here out of the bleeder valve, that's when we know that the system is free of any air pockets. But until then, the water pump's not gonna act 100% efficiently because as it's picking up air, it's not doing its job to the best extent. So we're gonna let that breathe and let any of the air get out of the system and then we'll cap it off once it's got a little bit of fluid shooting out here. And we're gonna keep our eye on the temperatures. Here inside the car, coolant temp is right at the middle, so that's good. And we're starting to get some heat out of the air conditioning now. So that means that we're getting some fresh fluid to the heater core, so that's good. We know the water pump is uh, starting to work and we're just gonna make sure that it has no air pockets.
Alrighty, so we're driving it. You know, ABS light is off because it just came on because of the battery being disconnected. Check engine lights off, so that's good. Car is maintaining a good temperature, that's good. But oh my goodness, that drive shaft is just vibrating. And I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's the drive shaft. I'm definitely getting a lot of vibration from the exhaust because it's obviously like dumping right under the floorboards right there. So I can feel that, but I, I also think that we're getting a bit of noise back there from I think the drive shaft. So I'm gonna be hunting for one really quickly here. Definitely need to replace it so that we don't have that crazy vibration. Otherwise, it's just gonna make our center support bearing fail again. So we need to get that taken care of. or not or it could be the drive shaft but definitely want to get it taken care of almost sounds like it could be something inside the car here oh yeah never mind it was just all the bolts in here rattling that was making the funny high-pitched noise so yeah I want to get some bolts on the exhaust with some gaskets I have them in the mail and uh, that with another exhaust hanger should complete the exhaust system. And then we definitely need to get probably a drive shaft for this car. Alrighty, so first impressions driving the car. It, it seems to drive pretty well. It's got power there. It's running on all cylinders. If you saw in the other videos, we already did the valve cover gasket, spark plugs. We serviced the oil filter sand gasket, the center support bearing as well. But we found that the U-joint on the drive shaft was actually failed. And because it has so much play in it, I didn't think that we were gonna get away so easily without replacing it. And as we saw from driving the car, there's a really consistent vibration under load from the drive shaft. It's definitely not just from the exhaust, although the exhaust is pretty loud, but we're going to have to service that. So in an upcoming episode, we'll probably have to grab one of those things used because I want to save a couple bucks and I think I have an idea of where we can get one. So stay tuned for more episodes on the E46 wagon. I hope you guys are really enjoying this series because once we get this thing in really good drivable condition, I can't wait to go on some adventures with it. Maybe make some off-road mods to the car, but things that are only temporary because keep in mind we will be selling this thing when it is in tip-top condition. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like down below. Leave a comment down below if you have any tips or suggestions about doing a cooling system overhaul on the M54 platform. And subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't yet. I hope everyone has an awesome day and we'll see you in the next video.